Welcome to our lecture online. So now let's get a good conceptual feel for the relationship between the orbital radius of the large and the small objects in a binary system and their relative masses. So here we have a nice picture. Notice that we have the center of orbit for the two objects. So you can see that the large object will revolve around the very center right here and the small object will revolve around the very center in the same way, obviously in the opposite direction, so that they're always opposite to one another or opposite to the very center. And that's how they will stay in sync as they move around. But what is the relationship between the radii of those orbits and their masses? So first of all, we go back to what we've seen before that the large radius, or I should say the radius of the large object is equal to the ratio of the mass of the small object divided by the total mass times the total distance s between the two objects. So s here would be the distance from the center mass of the small object to the center mass of the large object. Likewise, the, small, the radius of the small object is equal to the ratio of the large mass divided by the total mass. Again, multiply times the total distance. And essentially, that then becomes the reduced mass divided by the large mass for the radius of the large mass and the reduced mass divided by the small mass multiplied times the total distance for the radius of the small mass. Then you can see that if you then multiply large r times large m, you get the reduced mass times s, and here again if you multiply the small m times the small r, you get reduced mass times s. So you can see that the product of the large r times the large m equals the product of the small r times the small m, the radius and the mass related to the small object, the radius and the mass related to the large object, so you know then that they must be the same. The product of small r times small m, the radius and the mass of the small object, must equal the product of large r times large m, which is the radius and the mass of the large object. So if we then do an example of that, let's say that we have the large mass equals six times the small mass. And then we realize here that the radius is equal to, uh, let's see here, r times m, where am I here? Yeah, the radius, hmm, what am I doing here? I kind of lost track of what I was doing. Ah, yes, <laughs> I take this equation. I forgot what equation I was using. I take this equation and I divide both sides by small m, so I get the radius equals large r, large m over small m, and that is r times six times the mass of the small mass, which is equal to the mass of the large mass divided by m, m's cancel, r then becomes six times the radius of the large object. So, if the mass of the large object is six times the mass of the small object, then the radius of the small object is six times the radius of the large ob object. That's what that means. And so now we have that conceptual feel of the relative size of the mass to the relative size of the radius of their orbits around the barycenter. And so once we have that, we can then use that in future uh, problems. It's just an easy thing to, to kind of take hold of and go realize, ah, if the mass is five times as much, the radius of small objects is five times as much and so forth. And so that's a simple way of looking at the relative size of the radius to the relative size of the mass. And that is how it's done.